Hi everybody, I'm Neo Lack and this is Digital Wave. Today we're talking about the other 99. We're going to do an EDH deck tag. Alright, so tonight we'll be talking about Karanos, God of the Storm. He's a legendary enchantment creature from Theros block. <clears throat> Indestructible. As long as your devotion to red and blue is less than 7, he's not a creature. Uh, let's see. Reveal the first card you draw on each of your turns. If it's a land card, draw another card. If it's a non-land card, then you do 3 damage to target creature or player. He is a 6-5 uh, indestructible enchantment god badass. So There is 99 other cards that we're going to have to go through. It's going to take a while. Just bear with me. I'm going to try and talk as fast as I can without messing up too much. Uh, at the end of the video, never mind about the end of the video, in the description below, I'll leave a link to a deck list, and you can, um, you know, get a better look at it there. So we're going to start off with some enchantments, it looks like. So, well, before we get to that, uh, win conditions, you can probably take somebody out with damage, but that's not the preferred method. Uh, generally, I just like to draw my whole deck and uh, cast Laboratory Maniac and win the game. That's how I like to win. Um, you can you can win through damage in other ways, as you'll see. So, since we just like to sit back and draw cards, stand still. It's uh, one blue, one colorless enchantment. Uh, whenever somebody casts a spell. Uh, sacrifice standstill, each of that player's opponents all draw three cards. Decree of Silence, it's kind of like the same thing, except it costs eight. Um, so it's an enchantment, whenever somebody casts a spell, uh, counter it, put a depletion counter on this. After there's three depletion counters on it, you sacrifice it. So basically you get a counter of three spells. It also has cycle ability, so when you cycle it, you can counter target spell. Um, and since the cycling is an ability on the card, and you're not actually casting it, it kind of makes it like semi uncounterable. Future Sight, three blue, uh, two colorless, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library as if it's a card in your hand. So it kind of extends extends our hand size by one, essentially. And everybody gets to see what you're drawing. A ley line of anticipation, which in your opening hand, you can start with it on the battlefield. Uh, all your cards, non-land cards, have flash, so you would cast everything really fast. Artifacts. Mizium Transreliquent. It costs three. You can pay three to copy any artifact on the battlefield. You can pay it one colorless, one blue, one red, copy any artifact on the battlefield, and then it retains this ability. This first one only lasts until the end of the turn. The second one is indefinite with the ability to keep copying stuff. Scroll rack, really great. Love this card. Um, it costs two. You pay one, tap it, put cards from your hand on top of your library, and well. Put cards from your hand, set them aside, take that many cards from the top of your library, put the cards that you set aside on top of your library, so you're just like switching cards from your hand to your library, and you get to reorder them however you want. It's really good. What is this one again? Expedition map. Cost one, pay two, sack it, search your library for any land card, reveal it, put it in your hand. It's really powerful. Relic of Progenitus, uh, cost one, you can tap it, target player exiles a card from their graveyard, or you can pay one, exile, um, Relic of Progenitus, and all cards in all graveyards, and you draw a card. Good graveyard hate. Sensei's Divining Top, cost one, uh, pay one, look at the top three cards of your library, reorder them any way you like, tap, uh, draw a card, and put Sensei's Divining Top on top of your library. Armillary Sphere, it costs two. Um, pay two, sacrifice it, search your library for two basic land cards, reveal them, put them into your hands. Mox Diamond, costs zero. When you play it, discard a land card. If you don't, sacrifice Mox Diamond. So, 
Guild of Lois, Gilded Lotus, it costs five, taps for uh, three mana of any one color. Thrawn Dynamo, it costs four, taps for three colorless. Soul Ring, it costs one and taps for two. Star Compass, it costs two, enters the battlefield tapped, and it taps for any land among basic lands that you control. So you have to control a basic land for this to work. Dark Steel Ingot, indestructible artifact, taps for any color, it costs three. Vessel of Endless Rest, it costs three, taps for any color. Um, also, when it enters the battlefield, you put a card from a graveyard on the bottom of its uh, owner's library. So if somebody has a nuisance card in their graveyard, you can get rid of it, or you can get a card back into yours. Batter Skull, uh, it costs five. Uh, enters the battlefield with a zero, one, uh, zero, zero germ token attached to it. Um, Batter Skull gives the germ token plus four, plus four vigilance and lifelink. It also has ability to return it back to your hand. So it's pretty useful and can help gain you some life back. Um, Worm Coil Engine, Lifelink Death Touch, 6-6, six, six, cost 6 to cast. When it dies, you get two three threes. Two three threes. One has lifelink, one has death touch. So very useful card. Ulamog, Infinite Gyre, 1111, indestructible. When you cast him, you get to destroy a target permanent. When it attacks, um, it has um, Annihilator 4, so your opponent has to sacrifice 4 things. Uh, also, if he gets put in the graveyard from anywhere, you shuffle him and your graveyard back into your library, so very useful card. Azami, Lady of Scrolls, 3 blue, 2 colorless, uh, human wizard, tap and untap wizard you control to draw a card. She's a 0-2. Vencer, uh, two blue, two colorless, flash, when he enters the battlefield, return target spell or permanent to its owner's hand. So that means that you can kind of counter a spell. If somebody plays something you really don't like, then you can return it back to their hand. So it, he's pretty good. Next we have Marsurial Chemister. He costs one blue, one red, three colorless. Um, you can pay a blue and tap to draw two cards. You can pay a red and tap to discard a card and you do damage to a creature equal to that card's converted mana cost. So basically you get to throw things at him. Like Ulamog. Pay a red, tap him, discard Ulamog, do 11 damage to a creature. This seems pretty good, right? And then the Pain Artist. One blue, one red. Um, you can pay one blue, one red and X and tap her and you do X damage to target creature so since our commander is indestructible once he becomes a creature um, <clears throat> you can do lots of damage to him and draw all the cards that you want all the cards you need clever impersonator copy any permanent on the battlefield for four two blue two colorless Thassa one blue two colorless indestructible the beginning of your draw step, you scry one, so Thassa is pretty powerful with our commander. She can also make uh, something uh, unblockable until the end of the turn, so if we do need to get damage um, with our commander, we can do that. Stormtide Leviathan, three blue, five colorless. All lands are islands in addition to their other type. It has land walk, creatures with only creatures with land walk and flying can attack so kind of locks down the board a little bit very useful laboratory maniac one of our main win conditions one blue two colorless if you would go to draw a card and you have no cards to draw you win the game instead of losing the game arcanus the omnipotent three blue three colorless you can tap him to draw three cards or you can pay four um, two colorless two blue to return him back to your hand he's a wizard also Trinket Mage, Human Wizard, one blue, two colorless. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic, or search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less. So, get um, Mox Diamond, Soul Ring, Sensei's Divining Top, 
all the good stuff, relic progenitus, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Solemn Simulacrum, costs four. When he enters the battlefield, you get a basic land card from your library on the battlefield tapped. When he dies, you draw a card. Is it Cronarch? One blue, one red, two colorless. When he enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery from the graveyard to your hand. So he's pretty good. Consecrated Sphinx, two blue, four colorless. Flying, whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. That's really good. Mole Drifter, it costs one blue, four colorless. Flying, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, draw two cards or you can cast it for its invoke cost which is one blue and two colorless and you get to um, when it enters the battlefield you sacrifice it so basically you're just using the invoke cost to draw two cards draw two cards excuse me Dax duplicate one blue one red two colorless um, enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield <clears throat> Except it gains haste and dethrone. Dethrone says if it attacks the creature or the player with the highest life total, it put a plus one counter on him. Magus the future. Three blue, two colorless. Play with the top card. So it's basically future sight, but on a stick, on a creature. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library as if it's in your hand. Uh, Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, three colorless, one blue, which is Phyrexian mana. Uh, copy any artifact or creature on the battlefield. So the Phyrexian mana says you can pay two life instead of blue. So it's it's pretty good if you don't have much uh, mana. Now for the instants and sorceries, we'll start off with Obliterate. Can't be countered. Um, destroy each artifact, creature, and land card. So. Our commander is indestructible, so our commander will survive the damage, survive the spell. Thassa survives the spell. Our enchantments and our planeswalkers survive the spell. And we're left with a big advantage after we reset the board. Instants and sorceries. Mindbreak trap. If an opponent casts three or more spells in one turn, you may cast this for free. Uh, otherwise, it costs two blue and two colorless, and it says exile target spell. Exile any number of target spells. So if there's a bunch of spells on the stack, you can exile them all. Cryptic command. Uh, two blue, or three blue, one colorless. Uh, you can draw a card. You can tap all of your opponent's guys. You can return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, and you can counter a spell. So uh, those are all really great options, and the fact that you get a pick two is really overpowered. Mystical Tutor, search your library for instant or sorcery card, reveal it, put it on top of your library. So you get to pick any of these awesome instants or sorceries that I'm showing you. Acquire, two blue, three colorless, search target opponent's library for a artifact card and put it into play. So most of the time I just grab Gilded Lotus. I paid five to steal my opponent's Gilded Lotus. It's awesome, I love it. Wipe away, uh, two blue, one colorless, has split second so it can't be responded to uh, while it's on the stack and you return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Or just target permanent. It doesn't matter if it's land. Factor Fiction. Uh, one blue, three colorless. Um, target opponent. So reveal the top five cards of your library. Target opponent puts them into two piles. And you choose one and put one into your hand. Uh, one pile can have zero in it. If your opponent doesn't know that. I don't know why they would give you all five. But hey, you never know. Um, Curse of the Swine. So, uh, blue, blue, and X, exile X target creatures, and um, its controller gets a 2-2 two, two green boar. So, it's a good removal spell. Beacon of Tomorrows, uh, 2 blue, 6 colorless. Target player takes an extra turn after this turn. 
shuffle Beacon of Tomorrow's into its owner's library. Spin into Myth, uh, put target creature on top of its owner's library, and Fate Seal 2. So you get a look at the top two cards of their library after you put the creature on top, and then decide if you want to put them on the bottom, or leave them on the top. Mud the Mixture. Uh, two blue, counter target instant or sorcery spell. It also has this transmute ability, which is blue, blue, and one colorless. So you discard this, search your library for a card with converted mana cost equal to this card, which is to um, reveal it and put it into your hand. So you can get Is It Charm, Cyclonic Rift, um, I don't know what Curse of the Swine, uh, any of these awesome two drops that I've mentioned. Counterflux, counter target spell. Counterflux can't be countered. Uh, you can pay its overload cost, which is an extra mana, and counter all the spells on the stack. Is it charm? Counter target non creature spell. Unless its controller pays two, or you can draw two cards and discard two cards. Yeah, or you can do two damage to target creature. Time stop. Somebody starts doing something really silly. You don't like it. You, you can counter their spell. You can counter all their abilities that are on the stack. Their turn just comes to an end. Prophetic bolt. Four damage to target creature or player. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom in any order. Jace's Ingenuity. Ingenuity. Draw three cards. Pretty good. Trick Bind. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Then um, abilities on that card can't be triggered again or activated again for the end of the turn. Until the end of the turn. It also has split second, so it can't be responded to while it's on the stack. Hinder. Counter target spell. Um, and you can have your opponent put that spell on top of their library or on the bottom of their library. Cyclonic Rift, one blue, one colorless. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, or you can pay seven for its overload cost and return each non-land permanent you don't control to their owner's hand. So it's a really good board wipe that doesn't affect you, which is why it's really good. Electrolyze. This is one that has Dak Fade and Art on it. It is one of my favorites. <clears throat> Two damage to target creature or player, and draw a card. Decipate. Uh, counter target spell. If it's countered this way, exile it. Temporal Mastery. Um, pay seven to take an extra turn after this. If it's the first card you draw this turn, then you may... Um, Pay two instead. So that's pretty awesome. Brainstorm, draw three cards. Uh, take two cards from your hand and put them on top of your library. Uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Uh, you can plus two. Uh, look at the top card of any library and you may put it on the bottom of that owner's library. Uh, zero is Brainstorm. Uh, that card I just just showed you, draw three cards and take two cards from your hand, put them on the top of your library. Minus one says return target creature to its owner's hand. And minus 12 is exile target player's library. And then they take their hand and shuffle it into their library. So their hand becomes their library, their library is gone, and you're basically winning the game. Ralph Zarek. Uh, plus one, tap target permanent, untap another permanent. Minus two, do three damage to target creature or player. Minus seven, flip five coins and take an extra turn for each heads that came up. Dak Faden says draw two card, target player draws two cards and discards two cards so you can target your opponent. So if you play Consecrated Sphinx, target your opponent, make them draw two, discard two, and you're drawing four and discarding none awesome right or minus two um, steel target artifact or minus six minus six yeah you get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell that targets a permanent can control that permanent so pretty awesome right Tamio the moon sage plus one 
Uh, tap target permanent. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Minus two. Draw a card for each tapped creature your opponent controls, or minus six. Uh, whenever a card would get put into your graveyard from anywhere, you may return it to your hand instead. Chase Bellerin. Uh, each player draws a card on his plus two. Minus one says you draw a card, and minus ten says target player draws twenty cards. So those are all really good abilities. Karn Liberated, plus four, um, exile a card from target player's hand, minus three, exile target permanent, or minus fourteen, restart the game, uh, and then you take all the cards exiled with Karn and put them on the battlefield under your control. So what I'd like to do is just have a handful of really good cards, exile cards from my hand, and then restart the game with all those really good cards. So, pretty awesome. Next, we're going on to the land cards. So, we have Genstone Caverns. Um, this card, if it's in your opening hand, you can start with it in the game, only if you're not going first. And if you start with it in the game, you put a luck counter on it. As long as it has a luck counter on it, you can tap it for any color. Otherwise, it just taps for colorless. Teleria West enters the battlefield tapped. It taps for blue, and it has a transmute ability. So you pay three, you discard this, and look for another card that doesn't have a converted mana cost. So you can get any lands or any zero drops. Strip Mine just having at least some sort of land destruction is pretty good get rid of somebody's reliquary tower get rid of somebody's bounce land get rid of i don't know their cavern of souls whatever their utility land mana vault it taps for a colorless you can pay one to have it become a 2-2 until the end of the turn and it has all creature types so if you turn this into a creature you animate it you can, if you have a zombie on the field, you can tap it because it'll be considered a wizard because all creature types. Academy runes, <clears throat> you can tap to add a colorless or you can pay for its ability to put an artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. So a lot of times people put expedition map. It seems pretty good, right? Maze of Ith, you can uh, untap target attacking creature and it neither deals nor receives combat damage this turn. Reliquary Tower, having no max hand size is really good, especially when our deck is made to draw a whole bunch of cards. Cavern of Souls, uh, we play lots of wizards and wizards are important to our deck, so having them uncounterable is really good. Flooded Strand, um, we can go get a blue source Polluted Delta, we can go get another blue source. Scolding Tarn, we can get a blue or a red source. Uh, Misty Rainforest, we can go get another blue for, uh, source. So, um, our deck is really heavy on the blue, so that's why most of the um, fetch lands are blue. There's also Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds. There, These are mostly just to help thin the deck. Also, when we play with the top card of our library revealed, um, if we don't like what we see, then we can use these fetch lands to go get a land card and then um, change what the top of the deck is, so it's pretty good. Cascade Bluffs, it taps for a colorless, or you can pay blue or red to get double blue, double red, or a blue and a red, so good color fixing. Shivan Reef. Pain land, it taps for a colorless, or you can pay one life to tap for blue or tap for red, if you need it. Is it Guildgate? Really bad land card. Enters the battlefield tap. There's uh, no abilities other than tapping for blue or red. So, just a really generic uh, dual land. Is it Boiler Works? Enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return target uh, land to its owner's hand and then you can tap it for blue and red at the same time. So getting double mana is alright. Um, here's the Khan's land, enters the battlefield tapped, when it enters the battlefield you gain a life and it taps for blue or red. 
Temple enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters, scry one. Taps for blue or red. Buddy land or check land. Uh, Sulfur falls. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or an island, and it taps for blue or red. Volcanic island, original dual land, island volcano, I mean, island mountain. I don't know what I was thinking, it's late. Uh, no downside, best land in the deck. Uh, steam vents, um, it's another volcanic island, except you have to pay to. It's, um, Island, mountain, when it enters the battlefield, do you pay two life to have it enter the battlefield untapped? Or pay two life to untap it, I guess. After that, we have basic land cards. I run uh, one mountain because of the star compass, and then I run ten basics. So that's the other 49 cards. Uh, like this video if you like the video, comment if you have questions, and subscribe for more. There'll be a deck list in the description. Have a good day.